to bring life and bring transformation and you promise me you will go with me are you John so 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 and so yes the Lord said somewhere in Enugu state here that you are going to build him a church see are you not surprised that it's ordinary people who are making things happen is that not a message enough for you I don't downplay competence let me repeat it again I don't downplay adherence to principles there are principles in life I am a teacher of the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom but let me tell you sincerely when all is said and done this is it you have tried your best here he comes No, it's only because you were lucky. It's the cloth you wore, that's why you could lift it. Next week, you are still lifting it again. After 10 years, you are still lifting it again. Because the helper remains with you. I know after 5 years, you will not last. Oh dear, what a joke. Once the helper is with you, you will keep rising. They were just lucky to be blessed. I'm sure that that, that, that car, it will not last. Another one will not come. But the helper comes again. I'm sure that ministry is just because the church is around his village people. No, sir. The only explanation to the mysterious continuity of great men is the help of God that has come as mercy. Listen, we're wrapping up. I wish I had the time to share my testimonies and tell you my stories. You will think I'm lying and you will think I'm exaggerating. And sometimes because sadly the body of Christ can misunderstand when you say some of these things. They take it for pride. But I live perpetually in awe of what the mercy of God can do. Believe me when I tell you, if you ever are looking for one person who is a recipient of God's mercy, it is this man standing before you. I have seen God do things in my life that you can almost tap yourself and say, wake up. Then said they among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad. Listen, the Lord is calling you tonight. In addition to your prayer, your fasting, your word life, your consecration, powerful kingdom principles to never compromise on. You want to soar? The energy that leaves the plane does not come from the plane. The energy that leaves the plane is already programmed in nature. So when you see the plane rising, that weight cannot rise like that. If the plane could rise on its own, it would rise like a bed without speed. It needed to tap into the law. Some of you, you have been walking, then you've tried running. You have not gotten to that speed. Let his hand lift you. And all of a sudden, you will see yourself soaring in realms. Realms and dimensions of the grace of God. You will marvel and you will wonder. You will lay up gold as dust. God will honor you and bless you. Recently, a, an international body, it's a global body, I return home and I get this letter and they write this letter that they want to give me an award and I'm looking at it and saying, award? How does this, end? of course, it may not be unusual that they've heard about me, but what in the world is this? An award by this body? I know the kinds of people who receive awards from that body. And I just went back and said, God, what is this? What is this? What is this? That you can sit down in worship and in awe and God will take someone else's prayer point and bring it for you as a gift and say take this is it I live a life of worship and awe because I thank God for showing me his mercy my life would have been miserable 
every time you think we are some kind of extra extraordinary people on one hand there are sacrifices that have been made i will tell you that in truth on one hand you have obtained grace to walk in keeping with certain principles but the other side of it please don't ask me it is the hand of god and his mercy for me it is not a recitation after service surely goodness and mercy these two spirits have stayed with me i know what it means to see the goodness of god i know what it means to see the mercy of god my assignment tonight is to prophesy over your life there is a dimension of mercy you must enter into this night are we together yes for when that happens you will watch your life and you will know the difference for some of you the moment the mercy of god steps in you will not even spend one month in this country believe me all of a sudden doors will open for you there are pastors listen by the time the mercy of god rests upon your altar people will come and meet you and say tell the truth i don't know you are someone who does uh, uh what they call it now herbal medicine or or, or or bury something under your what did you do because i know you and you will tell them listen i came from the soul conference and while i was seated quietly a man of god casually talked about this messy factor the mercy of god where do i get finance to run ministry it is messy oh. it is messy you can cry and call people to sow and all the millionaires will be watching you as if they didn't hear we are talking about the kingdom here they say wow well, pray and they will pray give and they will walk away and they will walk right to someone else and say can i have the privilege of giving you 10 10 million every month There are some of you, you already have what it takes for the world. to celebrate you. In all fairness, you have worked on yourself, ministerially, academically, business-wise. In all fairness, you have worked on yourself, but the mercy of God has not yet rested upon you. That's why you can remain and sweep the ground and watch ordinary people as though they were holding a charm. It is the mercy of God. When it is time to pray, I have a few more minutes with you. I want you to humble yourself tonight and pray and cry for mercy and say, Father. I know, I know that without you, without you, I can do nothing. Without you, there's no life. to me so I need you in my life today Hallelujah One day, I was preparing, just worshiping the Lord and resting. And then I get this text that a group of some business people want to see me. And they came and they said, we're real estate people and 
we enter the covenant with God. That anywhere in the world we build our estate, we must build a house for you till Jesus comes. I don't want to tell you how many estates they have built across the globe today. And some of those houses have never gone to even go and see it. There are keys to houses today that have not even gone to see my. I'm not saying this to brag. Are we together? Sometimes it's good to challenge people, the product of God's mercy. Product of God's mercy. There was a time within the period of two or three weeks, God brought 18 cars. What do you do with them? Will you put your leg in one and put your head in another one? What kind of thing is that? How many houses can you live in, even if you travel to every nation? See, it is what you have that you give. You can't give what... There's something you are going to receive this night. I'm not wasting your time. Please, don't be distracted. There is something that must come upon your life tonight. Because the favor of God is the child of His mercy. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. Is that in your Bible? For the time to favor her, near the set time. that mobilization John was in one month no poster no nothing coming to Jesus how do you explain this I'm not saying this to brag. I hope you, you, you don't misunderstand it. That God will grant you access to kings and nobles. Access to their heart. And you're wondering and saying, what is this? I'm not saying this to waste your time. I'm saying it because it must work in your life from this night. That you will return back and as some of you on your way going home, you will start seeing a strange call. And all that you'll be hearing in your spirit is messy, messy. And you pick the call and someone will say, where are you? I was in prayer and fasting and the Holy Ghost spoke to me. Are you John? Are you Ebuka? Are you this person? Please, come. See me in my office. Come with two or any two people you want to get a job. And they now come there and you are wondering. They just, just give them a job just like that. There are some of you, by the mercy of God, you are going to step into prepared blessings. Dimensions of blessings that have been prepared for you. I'm saying this to you by the Spirit of God. Hear me. There are some of you in ministry. The level of grace and the hand of God you will begin to see in your life will surprise you. Prophetic encounters, supernatural visitations by the Spirit of God. There is no limit to what the mercy of God can do in the life of a man. 
Because you know since COVID Many people's lives Churches, ministries, families Have gone down even economically Let me tell you the truth It will take God's mercy to go down When you have lost 1 billion Or 100 million in your investment Or in your business What kind of technology are you going to use To gain it back To take the mercy of God I don't know how it works for others But I can tell you how it works for me Grace Your grace I'm nothing without you Your grace Please start Your grace, your grace. I'm nothing without you. Your grace. Hear me. I have 10 more minutes with us and we're done. Out of that 10 minutes, we're going to take the next 2 minutes. I don't know how you're going to cry before God. I'm going to leave you for the next 2 minutes. Lord, I acknowledge you as the only one exclusively with the power to lift me and the power to help me. And I cry like Pine Bacillu, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Someone pray. I don't know how you will cry before God, oh, but I leave you with God, your maker, for the next two minutes. And that includes those following online. God is able to help you and to raise you by his mercy. Having obtained help from God, I continue to this day. Go ahead and pray. Mercy. Mercy. Where a man of God in ministry cry for mercy. You are a businessman cry for mercy. You are a prophet that wants to be used mightily by God cry for mercy. An apostle, a teacher of the word cry for mercy. Believe me that outside of the mercy. Of God, there is not much you can do. This is true. Two minutes, you are crying to your God and your maker. No 
eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has in store for me. So I submit to your word in me, till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me, till Christ is formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me, till Christ is born in me. Hey, no eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me, till Christ be born in me. Till Christ be formed in me, your glory revealed through me, your wisdom be found in me, your favor rests on me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. What you have prepared for me So I submit to your work in me Till Christ form in me Listen to me The Bible says If my people which are called by my name in as much as they are called by my name, the first thing is that they must humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. It says, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. The next time you say, Lord, I need your help. What you are saying is keep me in the zone of your mercy. Mercy. Now you know it is not an immature spiritual prayer. When you go to the place of prayer and you roll from left to right, crying and say, show me mercy. Show me mercy. It was that brokenness that God found in the young boy Solomon that made him to receive such a rich investment of wisdom. When Solomon was asked, what do I give you? He didn't just say, give me an understanding heart. He said, Lord, I am young and you have given me such a great people. Who is able to lead these people? He confessed his ignorance and his limitation. If there is something I know about God, I don't know everything about God, but there are a few things I know about God. One of it is that the presence of God is attracted and sustained by the cry of brokenness. Not the accuracy in prayer. Not the degree of compliance to the word alone. The presence of God is attracted and sustained by the voice of brokenness. Show me a man and a vessel that is and remains ever broken. You have found a way of trapping God's presence to your domain eternally. Let this mind be in you, the Bible says, Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, which was also in Christ Jesus. It says that even though he was God, he did not consider it a robbery, right? That he had that equality, yet he humbled himself. He submitted himself and died even the death on the cross. He says, wherefore, by reason of assuming that posture in the spirit and even physically, God had so highly exalted him and placed him 
upon him an office that is greater than every other office. It says that whoever invokes the authority that comes with that office, you see that? Whether of things in heaven, of things in the earth, or under the earth, every tongue, every knee bows, and every tongue confesses that Jesus is Lord even to the glory of the Father. I am telling you now that in the kingdom and in the life that we live in the spirit, our advantage and our edge is maintaining that posture of brokenness. Whether you are Jacob or Gideon or David or Solomon or even Jesus, it does not matter who you are. If it is the God of the Bible, you want to secure his presence and his help, you must perpetually remain in the place of brokenness, crying for his mercy, because one genuine encounter with God's mercy can rewrite your life, rewrite your destiny. Hallelujah. Let me speak over your life. Some of you, your spiritual fire has gone down. Some of you, your passion for spiritual things has gone down. Your prayer life is almost zero. Nothing to write home about. You may even be a man of God. Just because you are preaching does not mean your prayer life and your word life is alive. You are the one who knows your skill with God. Some of you right now, based on the assessment of your non-compliance to kingdom principles, you do not deserve certain levels of the hand of God. But the mercy of God is about to speak for you. Can I pray for you? In the name of Jesus. We call upon the helper of men and the merciful God. May he show you mercy tonight. Mercy over your spiritual life. Mercy over your family. Mercy over your finances. Mercy over your ministry. Mercy over your health. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that by reason of the blood and that which happened in Calvary, may mercy speak for you. The same mercy speaks against every altar and every manifestation of darkness over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak prophetically over your life. By reason of the mercy of God. Rise to heights unimagined. I open doors of opportunity for you by the mercy of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. The one who comes to make your walk with God easy. The one who comes to make your life possible. In the name of Jesus. He who died and rose again. I call for his ministry in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to leave this place. Return home with this revelation. Protect it and guard it. Teach everyone you know. And let them know that you have found a very powerful key. So when they look at you and say, Man of God, you are such an anointed man. Appreciate them sincerely. But tell them, hold on, don't go yet. Let me tell you something. That except for and except by the mercy of God, even in the midst of this plenty, we do not amount to much. Add it to their understanding that above and beyond the spiritual paraphernalia is the mercy of God that backs you. You are a businessman and God continues to increase and multiply you. When people come to you and say, what are you doing? Be honest with them. Show them the place of diligence. Show them the place of compliance with kingdom laws. And when you are done and they are about to go and say thank you, say, hold on, don't be in a rush, come back. There is a dimension I need to teach you. The spirit life is not complete with man's effort alone. There is the help of God that grants men the strength even to continue. You are a man of God and God is doing much through you in this city, in the east of the Niger and around. 
When people applaud you, receive it with joy and sincerity. But please, I beseech you, do well to let them know, truthfully so, that beyond what you saw that you clapped for, there is the one you have not seen. And in one word, it is called the help of God. I am a product of the help of God, you say. That way, your mentorship and your counsel to them will be complete. So you have left them responsible believers, understanding the precepts of the kingdom and the spirit that they should walk and live by. But then in addition, you leave them with that understanding that if your strength resides only in the consciousness of your prayer life and your word life and just your obedience and all of these things, the life of Peter in John 21 was a lesson for us. Peter was a fisherman professionally. Peter had a boat that was working. He had a net that was working. He was by the sea where fish should be. Yet strangely, he did not catch fish. There are times that everything is right, yet you will still not have results. God does that in everybody's life once in a while, so that he will remind you. There are times that God himself will stop the results from happening so that you are surprised then he says no it's not that this thing should not work i stopped it only to bring to your awareness that there is still another dimension the help of god because when your strength continues to lift you sometimes you can forget it's a weakness in men it has nothing to do with being good or bad it's a weakness in men i know if i go for the meeting people will be healed and blessed i know I glory be to god but you don't mean it and they laugh and say he has come again mighty man of god so there are times god will draw your ears and because we are usually very stubborn and we don't pay attention the only way he helps us to turn is to withdraw results every time god withdraw results men will turn to him and he'll say it was not about the results i wanted your attention remember that i am still there Not of God. Let the fire from your altar. Let the fire from your altar. In a While you are worshiping, God is touching your business. While you are worshiping, God is arranging things for you. While you are worshiping, God is arranging the people who will come and sow the land for the church. Forget about the sorrow. Go ahead, something is happening here. My voice lifted up. I will sing your praise. My hands lifted up. I will worship you. You've taken the pain and the sorrow away. You've given me peace. 
restoration of your passion for God a restoration of your passion for some of you after this conference you will start your own retreat with God because God is calling you you may need to shut down even in the secular we have public holidays where you shut down things so that you can face family or honor a national day or whatever it is God is calling you Man of God, by now you would have been a mighty prophet. By now your business would have gone around the world. But you have been starting for every other thing and you ignore the lover of your soul. Get back to the place of the altar. Leave me at the altar with my father. Leave me at the altar with my father. Leave me at the altar my father listen you see until you understand the place of genuine love it is the one secret I found and when I found it it was a master secret love oh I love him I love him I love him I can tell you that You want to see God prosper you? Second Chronicles 26 5. For as long as he sought the Lord, the Lord made him. You can try to make yourself vain is the help of man. The Lord made him to be the leading man of God within his city. The Lord made him, the Lord made her, the Lord made your products. That all of a sudden within one month your product is what is being patronized all over Enugu and people are saying by what means a covenant happened if if a gentleman comes here right now and by evening he returns back and tells you he's a billionaire you will not tell him what did you do you will say where did you go because this kind of wealth is not about what you have done again there, there has to be a covenant that has produced this kind of speed we are talking of scoring some of you have lingered too long that is where anger and jealousy and pain and petty things come from you can allow the lover to lift you and you will find yourself soaring in dimensions you never imagined this is my life sit down for five minutes let me introduce something to you and then we'll wrap up just leave those under the anointing, leave them to have their time with God. The conference is like a retreat for some of you. Yes. Help us to love you. Help us to live for you. 
may we never match you with business may we never match you with church may we never match you with anointing prayer is not God prayer is only there because there is God fasting is not God fasting is only necessary because there is God Bible study is not God God is not a page He's alive All and everything points to Him And when your life fails and ceases to point to Him You are then in trouble Let me introduce Just one more concept Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 I touch on this and we're done I spoke about the depth and the richness of your experience with God Proverbs 13 13 and verse 20 Just one last word 13 and 20 Please give it to us 1, 3 and 0 Proverbs 13 and verse 20 Let's read together if you can see it. Ready? One to read. She that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Please read it one more time. She that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools. The Bible tells us very clearly from Psalm 115 and verse 16, I believe Psalm 115 and verse 16. It says the highest heavens or the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has He given to the children of men. That means when it has to do with functioning in the earth, the cosmos, this is the world of men. Even though owned by God Listen carefully If you do not understand this Your leadership will fail I just needed to introduce this Even though the earth is the Lord's Listen carefully The steward of the earth is man The owner of the earth is the Lord's That means for you to excel in life You must know both the owner and the steward Are we together now? Yes most of us here rent houses and usually you don't have the privilege of seeing the owner or knowing the owner except in a few instances there usually is someone between the owner and the tenant called the caretaker is that true and the caretaker has been mandated by the owner to protect his interest as far as that business is concerned am i correct on that so it is the the, the caretaker who does all the negotiations, the paperwork and whatever it is. In fact, there are times that the owner can be overseas and then there is a caretaker who manages his estate. The Bible tells us that the earth that we function in belongs to the Lord, Psalm 24, but Psalm 115 is saying the stewardship of the earth is in the hands of man. That means whatever happens in the earth is not a reflection of the power of God. It's a reflection of the faithful stewardship or the mismanagement of that caretaker. If you do not have this wisdom understanding about the cosmos, you can be spiritual and you will still fail. This world is the world of men. Hallelujah. When God put man in the garden, he gave him stewardship and even when he saw him failing he still honored his decision that is how faithful god is that means it is possible for god to speak excellent things over your life your church your business your state and yet you do not see god manifest on that wise because we do not understand the dynamics of excelling in the cosmos every time i talk to leaders if I have one thing to teach them Is this understanding Of men Yesterday we began to discuss And our time is gone So I'm just going to touch it and then we're done On being helped by God And I did teach you That there are three expressions Of the help of God Number one is the ministry of mercy Number two Is the gift Of men 
That means every time God wants to help an individual and help a leader, He introduces you to men. The Bible says, What is man that thou art mindful of? Not the son of man that thou visitest him. You find that in Psalm 8. It says, For thou hast made him lower than Elohim. You have crowned him with glory and honor. You have set him over the works of your hands. Hebrews chapter 2, Paul gives a clearer perspective to Psalm 8. And he says, you have set him over the works of your hands. And in doing so, you did not leave anything that was not under his feet. You have to appreciate that mankind, listen carefully, the human species is the zenith of God's creation. That means God bound himself with a covenant that every time he has to function in the earth, he will need a man to work in partnership with him. He can do without a man, but he has so chosen by his predeterminate counsel to not work outside of men. So, the world is the world of men. I don't have time, I would have described for you the condition to be a man. Because to be a man, you first have to be a spirit. If you are not a spirit, you cannot be a man. Are we together now? Every man is first a spirit. But a spirit alone cannot be called man. You have to be a spirit that is hosted in a physical body. There are all kinds of bodies. But the only body that makes an individual to be called man is a physical body. And then midwifing that spirit and that body is your mental faculty. Thank you. Are we together now? Yes. So, there are many spirits. Angels cannot be called men. They are spirits. But they do not have our bodies. With us. Our, our configuration is not given to them. Animals have physical bodies, but they do not have spirits. You cannot call animals men. You need to understand who God gave the earth to. God did not give the earth to goats or whatever it is. Water is physical, but you cannot call water man. Even though water moves like man, you can hear the sound like man. So when it has to do with excelling in the earth, if you understand your business and you do not understand men, you will fail. The first product you need to understand is man. Second only to your understanding of God. The moment you understand God, as far as leadership and influence and excellence is concerned, you must understand man. Every trouble on earth today came because of man. The salvation that we have received came from a man. The man called Jesus. Hmm. Are we together? The one who purchased salvation for us. He did not purchase salvation as a spirit. No. He had to become a man. To come and die as a man. Mentored as a man. Resurrected as a man. And is today seated at the right hand of the Father as a man. The reason why we know Jesus is coming is because he left with his body. He doesn't need another body to return. The assurance of his coming is because when he left, he left with his body. So he has satisfied the condition that still gives him allowance into the world of men. The first time he could not just come because he never had a physical body. So he needed to go through the labor of finding a virgin, waiting for a virgin, and then, you know, being incubated in a stomach for nine months. But this time around, he can come any time because he does not need a body again. Now watch this. Everything that happens on earth happens through men. You may have heard me teach that all blessings come from God through men to men. All troubles come from Satan through men to men. Societies are transformed because of the presence of men. Societies are destroyed because of the presence of men. Evangelism happens because of the presence of men. 
Leadership happens territorially speaking because of the presence of men. The reason why some nations are called third world and others are called first world is because of men. It's not the seas that make them first world or, or whatever it is. The battle on earth today is for the hearts and the minds of men. I hope you know the battle on earth is not for gold. The battle on earth is not for oil. Listen, the battle on earth is not even for territory. The greatest battle on earth is who captures the hearts and the minds of men. The reason why your bank is functioning right now is because of men. The reason why you want to build a business right now is because there are men in Enugu. If you leave Enugu with goats alone and you are the only human being, even if the banks and the oils and everything are left, you cannot do business. Are you seeing that everything literally happens because of men? Isn't it interesting that everything happens because of men and yet most people learn every other thing but man they do not know about men but they know about business they open a school why are you opening schools because you know people will keep giving birth and their children will go to school your business literally is founded on that philosophy that the presence of men guarantees the continuity of your business some of you who have stores here if you have a baby saloon, why do you open a baby saloon? Because there are humans. And even when you cut the hair, it will still grow back. You cut it. You literally build a business around that information. Why does your restaurant and your malls thrive? They thrive because of men. It is men that eat the meal and they will go to the toilet and then return back again. So if they buy your pack, your bag of rice today, you tell him, see you next time. That statement is predicated on the information that you are a man. There is something about you that my business is built upon. Imagine if we ate once and never had to eat again. Farming will be useless. Manufacturing will be useless. Production will be useless. It is because you know that someday this cloth I am wearing is going to go through wear and tear. You literally, based on that information, you build a business around it. In one word, business is the ministry of men. Listen carefully, please. Don't think I don't know what I'm saying. Business is not the ministry of bottles. Business is not the ministry of containers. Business is not the ministry of cars. Business is not the ministry of schools. Business is the ministry of Every other product that you call business is only a midwife. The final consumer is a man. So if you know your product and you do not know the man, the reason why you clean your chairs very early in the morning, those who clean this beautiful church, when you came here early in the morning, probably there was no one or maybe a few people, and yet you had the confidence to set the stage because you knew that men will come. Imagine if you saw cows just coming, Maybe 30 of them. Would you say you are welcome? God bless you. Find a place to sit. No. Cows are physical things. But that's not what you are looking for. Men. Any leader who does not understand men is going to fail. As a pastor, as a businessman. The reason why most of us do not excel in our influence and our leadership is because we took our time to study any other thing and every other thing. And we ignore men. The zenith of God's creation. If God is going to lift you, it will come through men. Relationships are the most expensive commodities on earth. Relationships. There are watches that are very expensive. People will pride and say, I'm using a, a Rolex watch. I bought it 5 million naira. And look at it, has diamond crested in it. And yet they do not know that relationships are of inestimable value. You are, I always pray for my people and let me extend that prayer for you. May you never be so poor that the only thing you have is money. 
may you never be so poor that the only thing you have is money because if the only thing you have are notes in your house you are not wealthy the real honor of a man is not in his acquisitions the bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor that means your relationships represent the highest index of your wealth the degree to which you are connected to strategic relationships that provide a leverage to your destiny is the measure of your wealth money only comes to you through relationships it will take a hand exchanging to bring wealth to you now please listen if you do not understand this you will fail in life destiny fulfillment is impossible without relationships i am here right now in this lovely church because of a relationship a relationship that started in nairobi kenya but has been maintained so greatly relationships as busy as i am there are people who if they demand my attention i will respond almost instantly because of the power of relationships there are people today who did not have to do much in terms of business they invested diligently in their relationships and their relation they did not even start as business people they started as wise people because they worked with the wise and the end of their pursuit was a business and influence politicians understand this you find out somebody who never had the intention to be a governor or a senator he only followed wise people and as he followed wise people he started evolving to a version of himself that you now call a leader jesus said follow me and i will make you he never gave them any promise that you'll be called apostles he never gave them any promise that you'll be miracle workers he said follow me and i will make you through that relationship he produced those we call apostles who turned the world upside down listen to me relationships are currencies they can buy anything money can buy anything money can buy relationships can buy the easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships and destiny connections you may have heard me say it in my teachings that who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters truly who likes you matters there are people who can make things happen for others because of the strength of relationships i know people who got jobs after praying for jobs for three five six years in less than one hour one relationship brought the job for them i know people who got land to build a church there is no true story of success that is not connected to relationships the anointing that a man receives in his life is based on relationships we just graduated our school of ministry students on sunday glorious program and while i was praying for these people i was looking at them and my heart reached for compassion i said look at what relationships can do there are people who have no business being wealthy except that they were around wealthy people and it became unfair for them to remain in that state there are people who had no business being anointed but they were around anointed people and it became unfair for them to remain at that level if i see where you are it is a reflection of your relationships he that works with the wise shall be wise himself but a companion of fools shall be destroyed the man does not want to be destroyed but he's associated with people who are vulnerable to destruction and the end of it is that person is destroyed himself he that works with the wealthy shall be wealthy he that works with the anointed shall be anointed he that works with intelligent people shall be intelligent he that works with the godly shall be godly that means anything you want to become find those who already are that is your chance of becoming it you want to become a man of god doing ministry with the dignity of kingdom integrity you cannot have that hanging around people who compromises like their second name they don't have any regard for other and spiritual things 
You want to become someone of character, a great leader and a visionary man. There are people who are great people, but all their friends are drunkards, all their friends are unserious people, and then they say, it doesn't matter, I'm not like them. Yet, you are not like them yet. You are on your way becoming. A child does not know he's a child till he becomes an adult. It's when the child becomes an adult, he says, oh, I once was a child. So the drunkard does not know he's becoming a drunkard till he turns later on and finds out that, oh, I'm only doing five now. Listen to me. Most people have not learned the power of protecting their destinies by surrounding themselves with quality, godly people. You may have heard me say in my teachings, if there are five foolish people around you, you didn't count well, there are six. If there are five prayer warriors around you, you did not count well, there are six. If there are five visionary people around you, you did not count well, there are six. You are always a reflection of the company that you keep. Even in business, come on, I'm in the East here and you know, there are times that you pass a street that sell electronics. There are 10 shops all selling the same thing. And you will think because of the presence of one, they will fail. And yet they will all succeed. Because sometimes you will not find a product in one place. And the other one will lead you to another shop where you will get it. And he's still happy that you got it. Because you will come back for their sake. Please hear me. Leaders. If you are to live a qualitative destiny in this end time, go ahead to begin to select quality people. You must understand the power of men and how to relate with men. If you do not understand relationships, you will not rise. Pastor, if you do not understand relationships, you can be anointed and you will be surprised that your work will remain small. Businessman, you may never be able to scale heights and go global. It takes more than being anointed. The gift of men is one of the ways that God helps men to soar. Are we together? There are many things you need to know about men. You need to understand the vulnerabilities of men. You need to understand the inconsistencies of men. You need to also understand the different kinds of men we have in our world. You have to understand the kinds of relationships that are available. For instance, there are general relationships. The Bible mandates that we treat everyone with love and caution. You go out in the morning and you meet people. General relationships. There are seasonal relationships. Relationships that come to your life for a season. The key to maximizing those relationships is discernment. To receive what they have to deliver to you fast before their expiry time. Then there are covenant or destiny relationships. These are relationships that connect directly. Not just to where you are going, but the final journey. No matter what you need to do, you have to protect those relationships. For instance, your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It can be a general relationship. It can be a seasonal relationship. Your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is not even a covenant relationship. It is your life. That means whatever goes wrong in that relationship, you have to humble yourself and swallow your pride and press. Most people do not understand the power of relationships. We keep receiving prophetic words, but relationships destroy our potential for growth and scaling heights. I want to make a statement and then I wrap up. Our father, Dadio Nubogu, this great man is 83, 84. Do you know, one time, daddy traveled down to Koinonia just to come and visit and worship and I said this man is about 84 years old what is this man coming to do when he can follow online and not that it was any special program and I looked at this man and I said at this age relationships relationships are investments if you tell me today daddy is not feeling fine or something is wrong I can cancel a meeting to come and honor him for his health and don't say, ah, it's unfair. No, don't demand a level of my attention in a relationship you have not invested in. You see, oh dear. 
There are many people who are demanding it is fraud to demand a return from a, you can't put one naira and one one million. No. There are people that have not made any meaningful investment and contributions in their lives. It would be unfair for me to demand certain levels of their time, their resources, their attention. I have not made that kind of investment in their lives. You can't give God 10 minutes and want a global ministry. That, that, that is unfair. Are we together now? Your pastor, sometimes he travels down and we just come and worship and share fellowship and he leaves and I'm saying, my God, look at this. There are things that people do in my life that make me become indebted to them. There are times that people say, oh, apostle, you've been, we are trying to call you. We cannot get you. But so, so, so person said they called and you answered. I apologize. It's not injustice. It's called returns on investment. Are we together now? As a man of God, while everybody is trying to look for you for anointing, somebody is asking, have you eaten? Are you okay? Is God helping you? When that person is crying, will you keep quiet? If your business has not blessed anybody, you didn't raise anybody. Yesterday, Reverend was talking about the dear woman of God who helped him and all the things that she did. You can imagine. If for any reason she needs help, Reverend would get up and say, once it is within my power, I will go all the way. Listen, life is hard for many people because they have not received the gift of men. You have not seen men as a gift. Are we together? Every time you see unusual results, I can tell you among the many dynamics is the ministry of men. The ministry of men. The ministry of men. Some of you, there is nobody in your life today, right now, who can give you money. And don't mean a loan. You can just say, look, um, I, I think I need, I need to sort out something. You are in trouble, you are alone, except God shows you mercy. It is dangerous. You are living in a risk. Are we together? Who loves you right now? Enough to stay over my dead body to see this person cry. Have you impacted somebody's life that much for you to mean so much to them? There are people today, even if they go to be with the Lord, they will go rejoicing because the investments they have made in men has secured the destiny of their children to the third and to the fourth generation. There are many people who will tell you, what are you doing? I mean, real estate. What are you doing? Manufacturing. What are you doing? Importation and export. What are you doing? Maintaining relationships. That is my stream of income. Not, I'm not talking about myself alone. It will take a foolish person to laugh at you and say, Ah, you mean you're... Are you kidding me? That is an investment that does not fail. It never fails. Because you get wealthier from capital appreciation. As the person rises, he will bless you to honor his perception of your relationship. Is someone learning now? Because there are many of you who can destroy men because of your products. It does not matter. I will push anybody. It is my business. You are about to crash land. It takes the ministry of men. When you see me honor the fathers, when you see me love the people, it's not from a selfish standpoint. I love them sincerely, but I know one recommendation from a man who loves you can open the next 10 years of your life. And then one word of caution from a man of influence who has a problem with you can close a door that was once opened. Some of you, there are doors that are closed right now. It's not demons that close them. They were closed by men. Someone said, be careful. And that's it. 20 ministrations closed because one person said, be careful. I can't vouch for you. That's it. You were in the process of a contract 
and they said, listen, five billion is involved here. Do you trust these people? I said, well, I trust these two. I can't speak for this. And that's it. By the next day, you wake up after dancing and they tell you it will not work. The problem was not your skill. The problem was not your value. The problem was that you ignored the ministry of men. Unbelievers understand what I'm teaching you. Unbelievers have mastered the art of building ladders through relationships. You would hear me say it in my teachings that a man would travel from America to Nigeria to attend the birthday ceremony of a CEO's daughter who is two years old. Is she his friend? Please. Have you not seen people travel to attend weddings of certain people? You know a man who is busy. So busy he flew from Australia, America to attend a, 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 birthday, a, a wedding ceremony of a little girl or a little boy. It's more than that. They are registering their investments. I had the opportunity to pray one time for one of the governors when he became a governor, you know, the, the Thanksgiving service. I was there to preach somewhere and then it happened that it was his Thanksgiving service. And I saw people who would never have come to church. Never! Not even near the gates of church. They were there. I said, what are these people doing here? Christians, Muslims, known herbalists, known traditionalists. I mean, people were there. And I said, you see, everybody understands this except the church. That is the reason why we remain down. Lord, if you are a righteous man and you are in the midst of unrighteous men, you are still not safe. Your personal righteousness may not deliver you from Sodom and Gomorrah. You will need Abraham to come and help you. Are we together? My charge for you, therefore, is you, as you take inventory of the various things that you have, Begin to ask yourself, how many useful relationships have I invested in, in my life today, that can provide a leverage? Some of you are in this church right now. If you cry, there is nobody who can answer. Because your attitude and your disposition towards men, once people are not rich, you don't have any business with them. You continue that way, you will be in trouble. I wish I had the time I would have taught you the culture of dealing with relationships. It is a principle I have mastered in my life. It is not all about anointing. Valuable relationships. Two keys to maintaining relationships. Number one is honor. Honor is the discerning, the celebrating and the appreciating of men for their uniqueness. You cannot be able to maintain quality relationships that translate into an excelling life until you understand honor. Let me give you one last one. Number two, the second key that you need to be able to maintain relationships is your value and your contribution. No relationship will be committed to you indefinitely if you are not adding to it. Most of us are very parasitic in our relationships. You only expect people to do things for you. The moment you come, you say, I'm looking at you, you've not done anything for me. No. Nobody remembers those who take. We only remember people who give. Edge the memory of your presence in the life of people by contributing. Whether it is your value, your prayer, there's a group of women who pray for me all the time. I will never forget them, no matter how busy I am. Because I love them, but because of the depth of their contribution to my life. I can't forget them. I remember the people who have added and continue to add to my life. There's no guarantee that I will remember everybody. Even in a church like this, you will find out that sometimes men of God seem to tilt towards others than others. It's not, it's not being unfair. They are tilting towards the area that provides them value. If I know that you are valuable, you are useful to my life, as far as supporting what I represent is concerned, I will place priority upon you. One prayer. Father, grant me the grace to receive the gift of men into my life. To see men as an answered prayer, not as a load. Go ahead and pray. Grant me the grace to receive the gift of men. Praise the Lord. God bless you for staying tuned. 
with us till this time in genesis chapter 1 the bible said god said let there be light how amazing it was that in a split of a second light came into the world i want you to believe it today through the mouth of his servant apostle joshua selman under the spirit of the lord that god is sending light to your life today everything that pertains to your life god is bringing light to them god is sending light to that situation god is sending light to that academics god is sending light to that failed marriage god is sending light to your children god is sending light to your business and whatsoever darkness that have encumbered your business encumbered your family encumbered your progress your ministry your career your academics once light comes upon it i am assuring you that every hold and fetters of darkness would definitely lose their grip over whatsoever that has kept you down especially your health god is sending light to it remember it is not a desire of god that we will fall sick but his desire is that every one of us will be in good health even as our souls prosper so get set that as the light of the lord hits your life embrace that light because definitely darkness has no place in your life and if you are a new viewer on this channel i would like you to please subscribe to reflector hub tv youtube channel so that you could get our daily uploads stay revived 247 and your spirit man sets ablaze on fire most importantly you will not miss heaven at the end of your christian journey upon the earth god bless you share this video with your loved ones family and friends see you in our next video love you